The following is a presentation of the Match Talk Podcast Network. It's time for the ODU Wrestling Monarch Matcast, a show dedicated to all things related to the Old Dominion Wrestling Program. On the web at monarchmatcast.com. Now, here's your host, three time National Wrestling Writer and Broadcaster of the Year, and 2004 ODU alumnus, Jason Bryant. And welcome back to another episode of the OD Wrestling Monarch Matcast. Episode 63, Jason Bryant here with you, fresh off the plane from China, talking with associate head coach Daryl Thomas as the season has come and gone. We're about a month past the NCAA championships that were up in Pittsburgh. Old Dominion with All-American Larry Early. We talked to him last episode, three NCAA qualifiers, all three coming back next year. Uh, no seniors in the lineup as the postseason hit. But uh, Daryl Thomas, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate you having me back on, man. Before we even get to the season recap and we look at you know who progressed and, and things to look forward to and build toward the future, the annual golf tournament is scheduled for March 3rd. We record this on, excuse me, May 3rd. Uh, we record this on May the 2nd, so you still got time to get in, get your foursomes in, 1030 registration, 1230 shotgun start at Sewell's Point Golf Club. So uh, if anybody needs any more information, Coach Thomas, they can hit you up for that, right? Absolutely. They can, uh, they can either... They can email me D four Thomas the number four at Thomas at ODU um, and uh, we'll get them all taken care of. Send them the link to uh, to, to uh, set up their golf team. And even if you're not playing, you can make a you can make a donation or a whole sponsorship. Uh, we're still looking for those, so that would be great. And all of that, of course, uh, does contribute points to your ODUA, ODAF account as well. So even though I'm not playing, yeah, Matt Talk Online, I'm sponsoring a hole. Why not? <laughs> Nice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So before we get again into the the postseason uh, recap and such, uh, the NWCA recently announced its all academic team, its scholar all American team, as it's been branded. A uh, top twenty five finish. There's top thirty rankings. ODU comes in at number twenty five with a three point one nine GPA. Scholar All American Mikhail McGee, the All Academic All MAC team, was featured with uh, McGee, Killian Cardinal, Shane Jones, Dean Druak, and you know the, the focus on academics and the student athlete or the student part of student athlete is important at Old Dominion. You know how has that shaped the the, the recruiting? of the staff and say, okay, these are the type of kids we're looking to because, you know, all American honors are great. All academic honors honors are, are pretty great too. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, it's pretty cliche. Probably every coach in America says it, but at some point, uh, wrestling's got to end. And, um, uh, we understand that there's a small percentage of guys that go on and continue competing on the senior level. Um, obviously we want guys to do that, that have that passion, but we also understand guys have to get jobs and careers and, They'll start building their families and things like that down the line, too. So um, it's extremely important in recruiting to make sure that we're looking at those things uh, first and foremost before we look at, you know, and then we'll start looking into the the wrestling stuff. um, It's a big deal for us to be back in that top 25. I know we missed it by a little bit last year. I think we were above a 3-0, but it's pretty competitive to be in that top 25. So it's definitely an honor for our program. And then uh, Mikhail just – showing uh you know you can't you can't have one without the other in terms of being a scholar all-american it's, it's huge for him to have success on the mat and off the bat so it's good for our program good for our other guys in our program already to see and uh maybe some future guys that we're getting out to see here pretty soon you know the apr is such an important factor in college sports how much do you think that's shaped the way recruiting is done especially in wrestling oh uh, probably uh, it's a huge part of it it's a huge part of it because you're making a commitment to a kid um, that you're going to graduate them when, when you enter into a you know a, uh, a recruitment. So um, it's big, you know. That's our that's our whole goal is to graduate kids when they come here. Um, and if you don't do that, you're not your APR is going to be affected. So um, that's a big deal. When we look at how things happen. I mean, you spent time coaching at the junior college level, and a lot of those kids are now moving into Division II, uh, the NAIA, where it seems like D1 teams are, are less 
uh, you know, likely to take a chance on a junior college kid. Whereas there's there's been junior college kids come through Old Dominion. You know, Tim Young was a junior college transfer. So uh, what's it take for college coaches at Division One level to really look at a junior college kid and be like, yeah, this this kid's not a risk because that can kind of be a, uh, a kind of a misnomer that people that go to junior colleges are academic risks. Yeah, for sure, for sure, that can definitely be one of those things. There's a, there's, a, there's some kids in there that are uh, that maybe go for different reasons, maybe financial reasons, where it's a little bit cheaper right away, and they weren't getting those offers, or just to to better their uh, their resume a little bit. Um, but there are some that are there for the reasons, of the academic reasons. So um, for for us, it's a lot of digging, a lot of talking to the coaches, the people close to them, um, looking at really digging into their course. Uh, package and seeing exactly what they're taking and how they're doing in those those core classes that, that actually do transfer, um, making sure that they have the correct GPA to transfer in, um, not only Division One but but also the old division because you know it can be pretty competitive uh, with us sometimes. Um, and then just looking at character as well and, and seeing uh, the type of person they truly are at heart is, is important as well. So um, there's going to be ups and downs, especially. You know, when you come out of high school and you go, go away from home, there's ups and downs. So um, transferring, you know, midway through your career, there's also going to be some ups and downs and some growing things that we have to be willing to work through with those guys. Um, and, and Tim Young was a, was a good example of that. He had really a rocky start in the beginning of the year and really came on at the end. So we're expecting big things out of him. And um, he's finishing up his, his academics right now pretty well. And I think he's going to end up with some pretty good grades this semester. Uh, so we're, we're proud of what he's done and hope he continues to do that with this last year of eligibility. <laughs> When looking at the landscape of recruiting, as you know, this is this is prime time for recruiting. You know, the the high school nationals in Virginia Beach just finished up. We've had you know, Flow Nationals just finished up. You know, there's not a whole lot of unknowns when it comes to the senior class, but a lot of real pressure is is now on the juniors looking towards that future. But when when you look at outside factors with a school, uh, this year Old Dominion's football program had a monumental win beating Virginia Tech and that was a that was a, a a program win that was a win that put the school on sports center that it put them in the national headlines how much does something like that really increase the profile for wrestling and you know that, that did that win help kids recognize oh wait I, I heard you guys beat Virginia Tech in football I mean is that is that a real thing no that was definitely that was definitely a thing uh when that happened uh it was pretty fresh in a lot of minds of recruits and you know, they were talking about it. We were talking about it. Gave us something to talk about when we get when we call them and things like that. Uh, but it's huge. That stuff is huge because now they know what Old Dominion is. They've seen it. They've heard of it. It's fresh in their mind. They know that it's a school that can compete with Power Five conferences um, in all sports. And we just had a staff meeting uh, yesterday, actually, where they gave us all the highlights of all the athletic programs. And uh, it's crazy how, how good our athletic programs are. Uh, I think there was eight. There were eight top twenty-five wins. Um, by programs this year at our institution, so it, it's a big deal here. Sports are sports are big here, and they they, they help drive the university, and uh, it, it's a huge deal. Yeah, it was actually it was a guest on a podcast the other day, and, and the, the the chatter was you know why I chose Old Dominion, and I was actually having the same conversation with my wife coming out of high school. A lot of it, you know, growing up in the area, but I I had men's and women's basketball season tickets when I was like in middle school through high school. So you know, even though wrestling was a big part of part of my life, you know, in in, in high school, it's like. Yeah, it was those round ball teams, those those Wendy Larry teams that were making you know runs in late in the tournament in the, in the women's basketball and, and some of the fun fun teams that were were around you know Jeff Capel area early Blaine Taylor era it was uh, you know a lot of those other sports factor into you know people coming to school and visibility. So now shifting gears a little bit to this season, uh, the All American Larry Early you know transferred in from Minnesota, finally getting his feet wet. You know finished with an eighth place finish. He's probably better than that, but it was a pretty tough weight class. We talked to him last episode. Uh, you know, just start right at the top. Uh, but w- what were you uh, impressed with with uh, Larry's performance this season? Where do you think uh, he can improve, and and where do you think his ceiling is for next season? Yeah, I think he's got a really high high ceiling for next season. Um, I think he obviously started off really hot, um, and then kind of dipped a little bit in the middle there with some some uh, injuries and things like that. Um, but kind of found his footing again at there at the end, and, and really got it done. You know, his peaks and valleys and uh, he understood that, and I think now that he's done it, um, you've seen a change in his in his uh, in his training. Not that he wasn't training hard, but he's just gone to another level in terms of his training uh, this spring. So we had a really good spring um, spring uh, block of training here. So um, we were really pleased to see what he uh, 
was able to do in that block. So, um, but yeah, he, he definitely uh, made some jumps this season, but we expect a lot more out of him next year. And I think he knows that uh, personally um, from within now. Mikhail McGee, 125-pounder, finished a match away from All-American Honors, was in what's called the blood round, the round of 12, finished 31-6, and six, had a couple tough losses. I mean, Jack Mueller, who made the finals on the top side of the bracket from the University of Virginia, Pat Glory, a really talented true freshman. Those are his two losses, two guys that are, you know, they are the best, best in the, uh, some of the best in the country. And, you know, bracketing as it may, you know, Mikhail might have had a better shot to place if he was another place in the draw, but you know that's a sport of wrestling. Uh, kind of the same question, you know, what do you see from him as far as his improvement goes, and, and again, what's his ceiling for next year with 125 just super loaded next year too? Yeah, and, and Mikhail just just extremely consistent over his first two years. Um, definitely give him credit for that, and uh, keeping his body as healthy as he possibly could, and you know, really putting together two really good seasons and just kind of. You know, running into like you said, two two buzz saws there at the national tournament. But if he, you know, sees a couple more guys throughout the year, I think that's important. If uh, in December he gets that win over Rayvon Foley, where he was really controlling things and then kind of gave it away in overtime, you know, it sets him up for a higher seed, and, and he may have a better path to getting on that podium. Uh, but obviously, his goals are a lot higher, and he understands what he has to do. He understands how crucial getting those wins over, you know, top ten and top twelve guys are in terms of uh, getting seated high. You know, I think he was the 12th seed this year. Um, so, so getting up, moving up a couple spots is going to be going to be huge for him um, in terms of his path next year. So um, we're excited for him as well. How does he manage his weight? Because he, he looks like he's pretty big for the weight, but he also doesn't look like he's pretty big to the weight, you know, when, when you're standing next to a guy like Jack Mueller. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, he manages his weight well. Um, he does a good job with it. He, he always jokes around about going up, but I think we all know it. You know where he needs to be and um, what makes the most sense for him in terms of accomplishing his goals. So uh, he tried. He went up last year at the universities and uh, it wasn't a great experience. So um, we'll see. He, he can always put it on, but I think twenty five definitely best suited for him. Where did you see the biggest? uptick in his performance I mean 31 and 6 there's not a whole lot of opportunities for losses there in terms of you know he had some big wins he had a lot of bonus points but you know uh, the Midlands still seems to be like kind of a kryptonite for him I mean he didn't have a good tournament last year he didn't have a good tournament this year yeah yeah Midlands you know Midlands is, is, is pretty tough for anybody and I think uh in order to do well at the Midlands got you know we, we need uh I think it's kind of tough when, when you have Christmas right there, but I think you guys have to sacrifice a little bit. And maybe maybe you probably have to do a situation where, like in college, I know I didn't go home when I was getting ready for Midlands my, my, my last year instead because I wanted I knew it was how important it was to have proper training training schedule going on. And it's just tough when guys go home for a couple of days and then we you know we meet them out there. Um, it just it just doesn't it just doesn't doesn't work out well when trying to compete at the highest level. And so Darian Perry, 141 pound transfer from uh, that program in Ypsilanti, finished the season 24 and 10. Which some people might look at it on paper, going, "Well, he placed last year. He didn't place this year. He got worse." No, uh, I think it, it's abundantly clear that statistically he got better. He was under 500 last year on the podium, kind of you know caught lightning in a bottle at the national championships. 24 and 10 had wins over several All Americans this year. Uh, you know had a rough go at the tournament, ran into Nick Lee, ran into a, a pretty good Matt Finley from Utah Valley, a match that he probably should have won. A couple couple brain farts that look like there, and you know where where is his progression? Is how much? I mean, it's it's safe to say that he is better since he's arrived in Norfolk. But why is he better, and what does he need to do to eliminate kind of you know, for lack of a better term, a, a brain fart situation that cost him a match? Yeah, I think uh, part of him being better. He, I mean, he came from good coaches uh, in, a, in a good program over there at Eastern. They were making some strides before they dropped the program. Uh, but I think part of why it just is just simple uh, maturity. Just, just another year, another uh, another year of understanding. You know what what division one's about, and, uh, and being an all American, um, and then maybe you know his training was uh, we, we pushed him pretty hard this year, uh, just to try to get him outside of his comfort zone. You know, and I think just like a junior college transfer, he transferred, and it, it takes time to adjust to a new place um, midway through your career. So um, now he's got that out of the way. He's comfortable with his surroundings and uh, what's around him and, and the people he's around. Um, so now I think it's just he, he can make a he can make another huge jump this year. In right, his final season. 
those are the three who did qualify for the championships all will return as they're all underclassmen. And when we look at wrestlers who were just short of a berth, Antonio AG had been dealing with injuries since the midseason, was actually the first alternate at the weight class, but got hurt at the MAC tournament, defaulted the sixth. Tim Young, you know, point away from making the show. I mean, starts out his his Division One career, like I think it was like 0-7, 0-8 and and before he got a win, and, uh, you know, ultimately finished the season above 500, and you, know, you got guys that are that close to making the show. Kevin Budak was really close to making the show, even though there was a battle there all season with Keenan Carter for the starting spot at 149. So of the guys that didn't qualify, where, where are the biggest bright spots, even though these guys didn't make it to the tournament? Yeah, I think uh, I think all three of those guys are huge bright spots um, for us, you know, along with some other guys in there. Um, obviously, Keenan didn't end up winning the job, but he's a huge bright spot. Like, again, we always say he's our captain, one of our team captains. Um, and we know exactly what he's capable of. Um, Kevin, you know, all, all those guys that were razor thin close to going, and, and even Will Hilliard, who qualified a spot at heavyweight, um, just couldn't, couldn't, wasn't himself at the end with the injury. Uh, but all that stuff matters, and being healthy is, is crucial and critical. And I think uh, next year with our schedule, um, we made a couple changes. It's still going to be a tough schedule, but uh, we made a couple changes, you know, on the, on the, on the second half. And in, in the beginning there in December where it's not as grueling for us and we try to get get a little bit of breaks in between our, our big competition. So uh, I think it'll help in terms of injury and we'll be a little bit deeper as well where we have some guys where we can shuffle the lineup a little bit and not, not have to, uh, you know, have a guy wrestle every single, every single match throughout the year. Uh, so that stuff will be important and crucial. But, yeah, I mean, not outside of those three guys that got there, there's, there's other guys that are, that are very, very talented. Um, that didn't get there. Those four that have, that have been mentioned, um, you got a really good freshman class coming in. Um, so we'll see which of those guys uh, state themselves. We got some guys coming off red shirts um, that are very talented as well that that just need to make a jump. So um, there's a lot of upside, a lot of a lot of excitement. I think with our with our program from our staff right now, and uh, we're, we're excited to uh, see see how it all comes to fruition. And statistically, everybody who entered the conference tournament ended the season at least 500 or better. You know, Trevon Majet got thrown in there at 133, ended up at 500. You know, he provided some 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 fireworks. I mean, sometimes good, sometimes bad. But uh, you know, you, he was going to definitely go out there and, and let it all fly. You know, killing Cardinale, had adjusting to the weight. He finished 10 and 17, but did you know you got that win at the Virginia Duels in a dual meet? You know, he's still undersized, so you had some battles there. I mean, you had like you know the joke about McGee going up. You don't have you got too many bodies at 133, Daryl. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. So he, he'll, he'll stay down there. And then, uh, you know, Killian's uh, there in the middle. So we'll see what he decides to do if he decides to stay down and, and uh, compete down to 25 or, or build his body and go from there. So uh, either one, I think he'll be, he'll be fine. And, uh, you know, his time will come. Uh, but, yeah, 33, Majet. And Majet definitely, uh, you know, he just had he just was a little bit bigger than Killian and, and had a couple, couple wins that kind of solidified the job for him. Uh, there at the end, so he's uh, he's a guy that that can really make a jump, um, just with some simple 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 things here in the spring and summer, and uh, he understands that, and I, I think he's ready to make those jumps and ready to make the necessary sacrifices and commitment, and uh, and he, he can make, he can make a high jump, a really big jump. Yeah, I mean he, he's going for the home run, but uh, sometimes you you got to grip the bat the right way to be able to swing for the fences, right? Yep, absolutely. Let's use absolutely. some baseball analogies since it's baseball season. So uh, now, as we we look forward, guys like Luke Drugrak and Drew Drugrak have really they've stepped in and been thrown into some positions that are you know not really benefit. You know, I don't want to say beneficial; they're not optimal in a lot of ways for for starting athletes at Division One. I. I mean, what have those two really meant to the lineup? Because you know, with with, with injuries and off the mat issues that have come up, and and these guys have just been there. They've been team guys. No matter what, they're in there and they're 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 going to give you a fight. Yeah, and you just said it, team guys. And every program needs needs guys like that that are that are very consistent. You know, will step in, and then you know exactly what you're getting from them every single time. And you know, Luke Luke uh, is a guy who you know Selden goes down and, and can't return, and, and he steps in, and you know Selden was a three seed, and Luke steps in and takes third at the MAC tournament. You know, and that just goes that's a credit to him and his character, and, and just staying ready, always being ready, and, and continuing to. Uh, be focused and, and not caught off guard when it's when it's your time. Your time can come at any time. You never know when, and you just always have to be ready. You no know, coaches say that all the time, but it was the truth in his case. 
Um, and Dean, you know exactly what you're getting with him too. You know, he steps in and he's, and he's battling these 84 pounders. He's probably really a 74 pounder. Um, he's battling these 84 pounders and, and, and keeping matches tight, dual meets for us. And, uh, you know, you can't, you can't thank those guys enough for, for being ready and, and, and being, uh, as responsible in terms of, of staying focused and ready, uh, enough. Now, as we move forward, you also had another another heavyweight battle with with Ali Wahab and, and Will Hilliard, and of course the uh, the Monarch Award, you know the the, the social not social the uh, banquet, the athletic banquet. Talk about uh, a little bit about that award that Ali Wahab won. It was something I was not familiar with. Yeah, it's uh, you know he's a he's a he's a figure in the athletic community and in the, the academic community. Anytime anytime we're doing community service, he's always one to volunteer, um, and he's very He's a big guy. He's a goofy guy. He's a funny guy. So everybody just loves him. Um, he's very, you know, willing to, to help anybody in need. Um, and that was kind of what the what the award was um, that he won. So he definitely deserved it, no, no doubt about it, in my mind and in, in Coach Martin's mind. So. That's quality information there. Now, as we move forward, there was also some big news as it relates to the conference. Of course, Old Dominion is an affiliate of – or an associate member of the Mid-American Conference for Wrestling, and the MAC has absorbed what was the Eastern Wrestling League, which will include Edinburgh, Bloomsburg, Clarion, Lockhaven, Ryder, uh, that school in Fairfax, George Mason, and Cleveland State, creating right now a 15-team conference, although there is uh, word circulating that a 16th team will be added that has not been official yet, but I'm going to take a hunch and say it's a school in Arkansas that's starting wrestling. We'll just let you connect the dots there. But this is this is interesting because it creates a divisional alignment, a dual meet schedule. It 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 keeps the footprint of the conference impressive in terms of recruiting, but it also diminishes travel some. So you know this has been it had been rumored for months. And what were you, what are your initial thoughts on you know the the MAC and the EWL coming together for a, a giant wrestling conference that's uh, you know going to make travel easier, but it's also going to create a lot of different looks when it comes to qualifications. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a big deal. I think it's a big deal, like you said, for recruiting. Um, it's a big deal in terms of travel and, and us being able to keep things tight over here. We're still going to make our trips to the Midwest with having you know quite a few Midwest kids, and um, but it, it definitely helps out in terms of being able to go hit two dual meets in one weekend. Um, you know, within like five hours or maybe four hours or whatever. Um, so it's a, it's a big deal. Hopefully it brings in, you know, a ton more spots, which I think it will. You got a lot of programs on the rise, like Lock Haven, um, George Mason, um, Ryder, all, all those schools are, are doing good things. And I think they're going to bring, you know, some quality, uh, allocations to the conference. So it's a very exciting time. From what you know of it, is it, is it going to be, it's a divisional with two crossovers, right? Essentially with the, with the dual meet schedules. Yes. Well, right now it is for, for anybody on the, the East because, we're one team less, so we have to do two crossovers. But on the other side, I think they only have to do one. And I'm going to assume the crossovers that, that ODU wants is definitely going to be Missouri. Who is the other one being talked about? Uh, Missouri and uh, SIUER are two crossovers. Okay. So, you, so you've, you've packaged them as a travel partner type of deal. You're going to go out and probably either going to wrestle them both or they're going to come back this way. Is that how that works? Yeah. It, it's, I think it's supposed to be. In theory. Actually, in theory, doing, at least, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but we're we're doing it a little bit different. We're going to wrestle SIUE there at the end of December, and then uh, Missouri's coming here uh, in the end of November. So uh, our early part of our schedule is going to be tough. We got like Northwestern and Missouri on a Friday, Sunday, and then uh, two weeks later, I think we wrestle Tech. Um, so it'll be it'll be challenging right up front. So which is good to get that out of the way. Yeah, and for those those who are wondering of the history, Ryder and George Mason uh, were part of the wrestling CAA. George Mason, of course, was an all sports member of the CAA before the wave of conference realignment. Ryder back in you know the conference. I remember when it was one of the, that was one of, kind of one of the measuring points when Coach Martin first got the job because prior to Steve arriving at ODU, Ryder had beaten Old Dominion forty to six the year prior. The next year, Steve's first year, ODU beat Ryder. So and and I think they'd only either lost once or tied once. From that moment, so uh, it, it's something that it's, it's since Steve's gotten the job at Old Dominion, the the rider dominance has has kind of gone away. And you know, good staff there with with uh, John Hange. He's been a part of that staff for a long time. Always a festive attitude when when you wrestle rider. But you know that 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 team up there in Fairfax. You know Frank Beasley. He's a Lincoln guy. You you, you kind of know about him a little yeah. bit. Being 
an, an yep. Illinois guy, aggressive recruiter. You know, Mason Beckman, good staff there. What's it like to have another school in Virginia that's going to be able? You're going to have to battle recruits with. I mean, they're they're they're, they're trying to climb up, and you're going like you're going to have to beat them down. No, no, nope, this is our spot. Nope, nope. I mean, it, it seems to be yeah. like building a rivalry in in this conference would be a good thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely, we definitely will uh, be something of that effect. Um, but it's good. It's always good to have more competition, and it, it just pushes you to continue to find innovative ways to be better and uh, and continue to try to raise your level. So, um, anytime you have somebody, you know, nipping at your heels or anything like that, not necessarily in that case, but just in general. Um, you know, it, it makes it it makes for uh, it pushes you to another level. You know, as a coach, at least for me personally, I know. All right, I think that's what we've got for uh, the the season update and whatnot, Daryl. Any any last things you'd like to add as we head into the month of May? No, nope, no. Nope. Like you said, we're excited for the golf outing tomorrow. Um, we've got a ton of donations and and full sponsorships and teams. I think we've got about twenty four teams um, playing in it tomorrow. So we're excited. It's always a good it's always a good deal for us. Um, and then right after that, we're hitting the road to go do some junior junior recruiting. So going out to see some kids over the course of the next couple of weeks and doing some visits on campus. So hopefully we start to lock in some uh, 2020 kids, some more 2020 kids. We've got one locked in, but hopefully we lock, like, hopefully we get to uh, lock a few more in here in the next next month or so. I'm going to end things with a trivia question. Are you ready? I didn't prep you on this. So uh, you ready? Ready or not, here it comes. Uh, all right. <laughs> All right, 1970, Dan Gable lost in the finals to Larry Owings of Washington. Gable, of course, at the time wrestled at Iowa State, became the legendary coach at the University of Iowa, world champion, Olympic champion. The question is, what school did the last wrestler Dan Gable beat in college attend? Last wrestler Gable beat. I'm going to guess Iowa. <laughs> it's Old Dominion. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, did you know? See, he beat, he beat Wayne Bright in the semifinals, and then that year the All-Star Classic was the East-West All-Star, and that was after the season, and he wrestled Wayne Bright after the season. So the answer is correct in two different ways. But, uh, yeah, so that is one trivia question that ODU will always be tied to Coach Gable. So a little knowledge bomb for you there, Daryl. <laughs> Nice. I'll keep that one in the memory bank. I don't know if you can use that for recruiting or not. I don't know if you want to talk about us losing or anything, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. We'll see Daryl Thomas down the road, man. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.